what's up guys welcome back to the shop in today's video we're going to be doing a challenge the viking challenge and in this video i'm going to be making my first sacks i'm going to be making with two billets and one we're going to be starting with 12 layers of 15 and 20 and 1084 and on the second billet it's going to be a crush c pattern and we're going to be starting with about 24 layers with a bold layer of 1084 on the very top to give it some contrast let's get started First things first, we're going to clean up all our steel, make sure we have a nice, clean, and successful forge wheel. And for our first billet, we're just going to alternate between 15 and 20 and 1084, and putting on a bold layer of 15 and 20, and then a final, even more bold layer of 1084 to give it that contrast whenever we do our crushed seas. And there you can see what our first billet is going to look like. For the second billet, it's going to be a lot smaller and we're just alternating between 15 and 20 and 1084. I'm going to be forge welding this and layer stacking it again. That way I can get 24 layers in total for a twist pattern Damascus. And here you can see one little trick that I like to use is I'm spraying it down with WD-40 and that will protect the layers from oxidization in the forge. And here I'm going to start on my very first billet. This billet is the one that will end up being the twist Damascus. I am not going to do much forging on this billet right now. I just want to get the layers forge welded and that way I can cut it and restack it. That way I can get 24 layers. I want a low layer count, that way I have nice big bold lines throughout my blade that can really show. So that's what I'm going for here with this billet. And here I'm just going to straighten it out, that way I get nice even pieces when I cut it and hopefully I don't have to do too much grinding whenever I reforge weld it. One of the newer tools I like to use is a diamond wheel. It does really quick work of the scale and makes literally no dirt or dust. It's just one of my go-to tools. I love it very much. And then I'm going to hit it with the flap disc to smooth out the surface and get all those little spots nice and clean. And here once again I'm spraying some WD-40 just right into the seam and that'll help with a nice good strong forge wheel. This will be my final forge weld on this part of the build. I'm going to slowly draw it out to get to about one inch by one inch so I can twist my layers. I'm going for a Turkish twist look pattern where it has the little X going through it. I think it's really cool and I want that to be the centerpiece of my blade. So I'm going to make two and I'll have to twist them one clockwise, one counterclockwise. That way I can get that distinctive pattern. Here I'm using kiss blocks to get it the right size, just alternating back and forth between sides. And they are one inch kiss blocks, so that should give me my final dimensions. I'm not too worried about keeping the billet completely straight, because as you can see my press doesn't press completely straight. Since I'm going to twist it, I'm not too worried about the direction of the grain. And here are my two pieces, one I will twist clockwise, the other counter. Here all I'm doing is knocking in the corners, that way I don't have unwanted d lambs whenever I twist. And a good way to avoid that is just to round over all the corners. Make it a octagon or you can make it completely round, it's up to you, but it really does help. 
And here I begin my twist. In all honesty, it's very, very difficult to twist this. And because of the way my press is made, I actually have a lip on the bottom of the press and that actually gets in the way of twisting it. So I have to be very careful not to smash my fingers. But twisting by hand, it's, it's a lot of work. So it's very hard to get a nice consistent twist, but as long as it's nice and hot and keep going at it, it'll eventually be tight enough. One important thing I cannot stress enough is that one has to be counterclockwise and the other one has to be clockwise. So here I am doing my opposite twist. I don't know which one is which, but here I'm changing it up and I'm going the other way. If I end up twisting it the wrong way, I will pretty much ruin the pattern and have to start all over. Here I begin to start uh, messing it up, but then I remember and start twisting it back the right way. I see a lot of people that they put it on a post vise and then they twist it. That's not really feasible for me because I don't have a post vise. So the press is going to have to do for now. Maybe I'll make a hydraulic twisting machine or something down the line. That is the thought, but they are quite expensive to build. So I'm going to have to get my money up before I can do that. And here I'm just squishing it back down, trying to get it back into a usable square. I'm using my three quarter inch square dies here and they're doing a pretty good job in getting a nice consistent measurement throughout. And now it's time to start on my second billet. Here I'm opening up my kerosene bucket can thing and I'm putting in my ridiculously large billet which almost causes it to overflow but fortunately it did not overflow and I'm just gonna let it soak in there a little bit. This does the exact same thing as the WD-40. This ended up being quite the billet and kind of hard and difficult to manage mainly because of the size and how heavy it is. And because my press presses unevenly, it starts turning more into a diamond or a rhombus. Is a rhombus a diamond sideways? I don't know. I don't remember my geometry. But yes, so I start trying to square back up with my 2 inch squaring dies and it does an okay job. But it doesn't quite do the job as well as I would have liked. But we work with what we got so we keep going at it. The press is doing quick work of it, but it's just pressing it unevenly. At this point, the billet's starting to get pretty long and uh, the weight is distributed pretty forward heavy, so I'm starting to struggle to work it as I go, mainly because of the size. Now that I've crushed in my corners, I'm going to start flattening it out to give me that C pattern I'm looking for. Because of the sheer size of this thing, it's actually getting more and more difficult to work and manipulate and getting a nice straight even press. So I'm going to have to just take it in small steps as I go, piece by piece. And I have way more material than I need, so I'm just going to cut it in half and save that for another build. This will also help me with the size issue and make it a lot easier to manipulate. Now that the billet is much smaller, it's a lot easier to work with. 
Granted, I've never done crushed cheese before, mainly because I just I'm still pretty much a beginner at this, and I haven't really ventured into mosaics. But let me know down in the comments below, and if you guys are interested, I can definitely upgrade my press and start doing some more mosaics and crushed W's and all that good stuff. Just let me know down in the comments. Now that I got my crushed C's, I'm just resquaring my billet, and uh, hopefully the pattern comes out the way I wanted. Here I'm using some one-inch kiss blocks and forging it down. And here I'm using my surface grinder to get a nice clean face on the billet. I will be cutting this into smaller pieces that way I can stack them and make some W's. I'm looking for like a spike pattern with a black spike in between. Hopefully that's what I get. So this is the cutoff end from the layered seats I was making. This is one of the ends. This is the other end. Doesn't look quite as interesting. But still pretty cool. So, so far so good. I have my two pieces here. That I have on rough ground roughly. Pretty nice and flat. So, so I can restack them. But before I do that I have some minor bits and pieces. Can't really pick it up on the camera. Because of the light. But that's a big one. Little inclusions where I have little tiny bits of scale here and there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in your attic acid and then i'm going to cut them and make two separate billets and stack them that way i have two billets to match up with my two twist damascus billets that i already have prepped over here so i'm just going to work with two billets and hopefully this comes out right i've never done these before but can't deny this looks really cool here I got my two billets in this container I'm just gonna fill it up with muriatic acid but I'll do that outside off camera because that stuff stinks and I'll get back to you after it's all nice and clean Here I have my two billets. I'm gonna flip both of them like this and weld them together. So this right here is a pretty complicated press. If I don't press it evenly, it's gonna bend and break. So I'm trying to be as careful as I can with it. It seems like a pretty successful forge weld considering it bent and didn't break. So I think we're pretty good there. Here I'm just gonna forge it back down and we're gonna call it good. I got my one inch kiss blocks again and I'm just working it down. I wanted to get uh, the same thickness as the twist Damascus billets that I made. That way I can do the multi layer construction that I'm looking for. So I got my four bars ready. Well, forged out. Now I gotta clean them all up and make sure all these mating services meet up the right way. Cause right there they do not. But. So far so good, we got good progress. Back to the surface grinder. All right guys, so here are my bars. Again, my test etch just to make sure that they were aligned the way I want them. One issue I ran into, you can't really tell, but here are the black spikes that I was going for. On the mosaic, this doesn't look like a spike, more like a little hill. But I was planning on doing 
more well originally i wanted the spikes bigger but unfortunately i had no idea what i was doing now that i think forward i should have added more black pieces more 1084s to the top of the mosaic billet well the c's i was making not the mosaic bit i should have added more 1084s to the c billet the original billet i did that i made the c's with and that would have given me a lot deeper um spike but oh well this side I would uh, like to add some more 1084 but because these ends are so uneven if I grind them out flush it's gonna distort the pattern too much so instead I'm just gonna forge weld these together and uh, clean it up give it a quick little test edge and if I like it I'll stick with it if not once these are flat and everything's forge welded I should have a better surface to where I can add some 1084 to the end but so far it's looking pretty interesting so hopefully this comes out how I planned so here I'm tack welding up the billet and I'm very nervous going into this because it's so thin and so long or tall not long that it can very easily just bend and break so I'm tack welding the ends and hopefully things work out here I'm putting in some flux make sure I get nice clean welding surfaces and we cross our fingers and pray. Here I'm just gonna do all of my forge welding, just tapping it with the hammer. There's no need for a lot of force. I'm just gonna set those welds in, clean it up, reflux it, and keep just tapping away, consolidating those billets until I'm nice and sure that I got a nice solid forge weld. Now here I'm pretty sure my welds are good so I'm going to the press and I'm just lightly doing some tiny presses. I don't want to over press it and possibly break those welds but I do want to consolidate a little. I want a little bit more thickness on it so I can add those 1084s if I decide to here in a little bit which spoiler alert I do. So here's the result of the billet It's looking pretty good. I want to add some more 1084 to it which I'm probably gonna layer on the bottom and on the top probably two maybe three layers probably two to the top and to the bottom that way I can have some caps on there like so but to do that I need to clean up my billet cut off the ends make sure everything's good and welded and hopefully this will be my last forge weld and I can actually start forging out my knife Here I'm just tack welding some of those layers on there. I ended up doing six layers on each side because once I forge it down, it's gonna condense and be not quite as thick. So I'm just welding on the tips and for the center, as you can see, I got a wire wrapped around. I wrapped it around very tightly because I didn't want any weld on the center of my billet, especially right now since it's so thin, I don't wanna have to grind that weld off. So I went that route and it worked pretty well here i'm gonna do the same thing i did with the billet before now it's even thinner and taller so i'm just gonna tap away to make sure i got a nice good solid weld cool thing that happens right here once i start cleaning off with the brush that wire just breaks away that thin wire with all that heat becomes extremely delicate but it seems like it did its job very well my billet seems pretty sturdy and I'm not too worried about the center it seems to have welded quite nicely so I'm just gonna keep tapping away here the billets a little bit long for my forge so I'm just doing it in sections and here at this point I got pretty confident in my weld so I decided to take it to the hydraulic press and I'm just slowly working it my dies here are actually four inches across so you can tell how wide this billet is and I'm just gonna slowly work it down with the square dies I'm using my square dies because I want a nice consistent pattern and if I use 
any kind of drawing dice is gonna elongate the pattern which is something I, I don't want I just want to consolidate it down it's still elongating it a little bit but not as much and not as aggressively as if I was using some kind of drawing dice overall I want my sacks to have about two inches maybe an inch and a quarter in width and I'm working with four plus inches so as you can see I'm gonna have to work it down to a more manageable size. Here's some new drawing dies that I made by just rounding over some squaring dies and they worked extremely well. I was very happy with them and they're gonna be my drawing dies moving forward. The aggressive dies work well with other patterns and other billets but for something like this, this is the way to go. I get the length on my blade, thinning it down, but I don't get a pattern distortion which I think is pretty cool. And here I'll just straighten out my billet, getting all the kinks out. I ended up with a lot more steel than I needed, and I actually ended up making a longer blade than I originally had planned. I planned for about 15 inches in uh, blade length and 20 inches overall, and I ended up doing 20 inch blade in like 24, 25, 26 inches overall. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you didn't forge in your tip. I can't forge in my tip. I have to cut it out. Because if I forge it, I distort the pattern. So for all the people that are going to complain about that in the comments, don't, bro. Nobody cares. And here I am forging down my tang. I ended up cutting some notches on the side to give myself a nice, clean transition. If you don't do this, it kind of drags the pattern down when you press on it. So when you do this, you get nice crisp end to your pattern. And here I'm just gonna forge it down with the hammer, get it to the rough shape that I want. And here's a, something I took the liberty to do for this build. I'm actually forging the bevel in slightly, not because I'm forging in the bevel, but because I want to get a slight little curve on the blade. I know traditionally most saxes are straight, but I don't like straight saxes, so I'm giving mine a curve. If you make your own and you're like, wow, I want it to be straight, then you make your straight. But I like a curve in mine, so that's what I did. So we're out of the muriatic acid and you can see most of the pattern going through. These are big spots where the scale was. But it looks pretty good. You can see the difference from the acid and no acid. That's where it got up to. Big difference. But yep, time to profile the blade and get the heat treating. I'm not going to take too much material off. I'm just going to flatten it out and get it fairly even that way whenever I heat treat it it doesn't want to you know bow one way or the other and hopefully I get a nice straight blade out of the heat treat but fingers crossed here all I'm doing is getting nice clean edges on my knife and getting all the scale and getting a nice flat even surface that way, whenever I heat treat it, doesn't want to work one way or another. I'm not really trying to hawk off material. I think if I'm not mistaken, my blade is a quarter inch right here. And I don't really want to go much thinner than probably 3 16 So I'm being very conservative with the amount of material I'm taking off. Just the bare bones minimum that I need. And I know I'm going straight to the quench here, but I did normalize it about three times. I cycled it to make sure that I didn't get any kind of un unwanted stress in the blade. It's very important to do that, especially with all the forging that I did on this piece. So I didn't show it, but I did do it. I just did it off camera. So I'm out of the temper and this guy came out pretty straight. Minor little warp here or there. But really nothing I can't grind out straighten. So pretty happy with that result so let's get to it
up until this part of the grinding everything went pretty well nice and easy once I get on to actually grinding the edge is when I start having some difficulties because as some of you may know if you are longtime viewers and if you're not welcome to the channel you should subscribe I would appreciate it and you know watch all my stuff I got some pretty cool stuff that being said I don't really work on knives this big so it is really difficult to keep a nice straight edge all the way through but I managed to somehow and make it all the way to hand sanding here I'm just showing you a small clip of my hand sanding but in reality I hand sanded for like eight hours but thanks to movie magic you don't have to see that so we're gonna act like it never happened here I'm just throwing up my transition my edge where my handle is gonna meet up to and try to get a nice clean transition all right so we're good with the blade it's hand sanded it's ready to go time to move on to the handle I'm gonna be constructing the handle with a piece of black paper my car in the center sandwiched between two pieces of Paduke, something like that I'm gonna make a bigger guard piece to put in front and on the back and fit it up to this guy so we'll cut out my parts and get to it here I'm using my porta band to cut out my pieces Normally I would use my other bandsaw, but I still haven't fixed it and the blade wobbles a lot. And it's actually become a table full of stuff, so I have to move all that just to use it. But the porta band is empty, so I'm cutting it here. Because it doesn't have the depth that the other one has, I have to do a little sketchy thing right here, which is lifting it up very carefully. Do not do this at home. I'm doing it because I need to cut it. But yeah, I don't recommend it if you can avoid it. And here I ended up cutting the other pieces that I didn't know I needed to cut. And I would have avoided the other part that I did. Oh well, tis life. That's how you learn. Here I have a piece of my card I marked out with the layout of the tang. And I'm slowly working it in. I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger than I need because epoxy is going to fill it regardless. So I'm not too worried about that, but I am worried about it moving around. So I get my handy dandy push stick so I can have better safer control over it. And I slowly work it down. I am being very careful of my finger placement here. So if I do anything sketchy, I am actually paying a lot of attention. I do not play with safety here. And yeah, for everybody that keeps commenting on how close my fingers get, I'm being safe, guys. Do not worry. Here, I'm going to start mixing up my epoxy for my handle layers. I like to use black dye in mine, well, pigment in this case. That way, I can hide any little blemishes in black. And since I'm using black micarta, it works pretty well. And I'll just put on a nice little thin coat. That way, too much doesn't squish out into the center where my actual tank is going to go. That way, I keep my tank hole nice and clean so I don't have any complications down the line. I always like to use gloves when I'm working with epoxy. I'm surprised. I see some makers that just use it regularly and get their fingers all dirty. I can't do that. I just can't stand the feeling of epoxy on my hands. So. I always opt out for using gloves whenever I work with epoxy. Let me know in the comments down below if you're a glove person or not. I am religiously a glove person. And now it's time to move on to the bolster on my knife. I'm using a piece of my card as well for that because I like my car and not because I was running low on time for the build. And I'll just use the same drill bit with my drill and I'm just gonna put some sideward pressure to combine these holes. And now that I got my initial opening done, I'm going to follow away until I get enough clearance for my team to go all the way through with little to no effort. 
this is all the little detail work that goes into making one of these knives and me personally I hate filing I hate hand filing but I do know it's a very important part of the process so we have to do it when we have to do it I've already gone on ahead off camera and uh, squared out my handle material that way it is ready for gluing these pieces up I went on a table saw at my brother's shop because I don't have enough space here for a table saw and I just cut everything nice and square and with the handle nice and dry I'm just gonna start grinding it into an oval shape the reason why I'm going with an oval is because my knife ended up being about two inches wide at the base which was a lot wider than I had intended so I'm going with an oval design that way it covers the entirety of the blade and now I'm gonna take a four inch grinding wheel and I'm just gonna slowly carve in a little bit of an indentation that way I can fully grasp it with my hand and I can fit it in there comfortably because if not it's gonna just be too wide and it's gonna be unwieldable one thing that I like to use is the orbital sander don't see a lot of makers show using it or using it I don't know if they use it again let me know in the comments down below if you use an orbital sander but it is a great woodworking tool especially when doing handles like this because it helps smooth out all the rough edges that you end up having with your 2x72 and I'd like to take a moment to let you guys know that there are more participating channels and they will be in the description down below. Go check out their builds and to see which one you like the most. If you notice my name is not on here, it's because I am in the judges bracket. You cannot vote for me, but you can vote for any of the other guys. And I highly recommend that you go and check out their videos because there are some very cool builds in there. Way cooler than what I did, which I will humbly admit. And also, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors for this challenge. The sponsors do not actually give us anything personally, but they do do something even more important. And that is supply all the prices for the viewer portion of the challenge. So do us a favor and check them out in the description down below. Go to their websites, check out what they got. And if there's something that you would like, be sure to buy it and tell them that we sent you from the vacuum challenge. Now back to the build. Finally, after an eternity on this build, I finally get to see what my end product will start looking like, which believe me, is something I'm very excited for. And after our acid edge, we go straight into the coffee because we know that coffee makes everything better, especially Damascus knives. And now I'm going to sharpen my blade. I'm sharpening it with a 240 grit belt on my 2x72 grinder. Being extremely careful not to tilt it any wrong way because I will damage my pattern and my etch. And it will be a pain to rehand sand it and do it all over again. I don't tend to sharpen my knives before I'm done with them. And I tend to do it at the very end. But this time in this case, because the edge is so close to the handle... I decided to go on ahead and sharpen it before I put it into the handle. It might look like I'm actually wasting a lot of my epoxy here, but it's better to waste that epoxy than to have any holes or any voids inside of my handle material. So it's better safe than sorry. I am making a massive mess here, but this little trick that I learned from watching Neil Cummings' videos, I'm taking some Johnson's Space Wax, which they do not make anymore. It's discontinued, which I'm very sad about. But I'm using it to clean up the epoxy. Some chemical in it actually undoes the something in the epoxy, and it completely cleans it away. So I'm doing that and getting in there with some Q-tips with the Johnson Johnson paste wax and cleaning it up. I definitely recommend using this method, but since they don't make it anymore, you gotta be lucky to run into some. And here's a quick look at my final piece. I'm extremely happy with the way it looked. It didn't come out exactly how I wanted. I did make some mistakes in it, 
but we're going to act like this is what I wanted to make and be very happy. This thing looks great. It feels great. The look of the handle, I'm very happy with. I wanted a wood look. I didn't want to go too overboard because I wanted the actual centerpiece to be the Damascus in the blade, which I worked very hard to get to. Overall, it feels great in the hand and it is a killer blade that cuts. So here I am having some fun. Alright guys, and that is the end of this build. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed because I know a lot of you guys aren't subscribed. And I know you guys like the videos because you watch the video. So be sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.